mild-mannered employee by day, blog TV personality by night. You're watching TDC Mugton. Hey folks, it's Nick and Mitch. How old? And we're back in our unusual facility, and this time the, the, the movie review is actually captured on this camera. We went to see X-Men First Class, and it is worth the watch. However, for all comic book aficionados... There's inconsistencies. Uh, unfortunately, some inconsistencies that still irk me. They've changed some of the details in regards to uh, Magneto. Uh, they've changed some of the details in regards to Charles, Xavier. Charles Xavier's uh, handicap. Um, they may have affected uh, Hank, uh, or the, the one known as the Beast's um, origins. Um, they've modified some of the I, origins for... I'm probably wrong, but... I I'm fairly certain that uh, the, the blue fur came in a puberty form. Oh, I don't know. The only thing I do know is that I didn't. I, a lot of these characters, I don't remember reading how their origins came. Charles Xavier's, unfortunately, his handicap did not occur because of what happened in this no. movie. We won't spoil it for you. It's worth the watch. Regardless of all those small inconsistencies, the visual effects were done above par. Yes, they were. Very much so. They've the only... improved on them since... They've actually improved on them even since uh, Wolverine. Yeah. Uh, they uh, actually have um, a good chemistry going between the two actors that play Magneto and Charles. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the actors, but um, they'll be listed based on the IMDb cast listing because I don't remember I've who they are. I've seen the actor that plays Magneto before, but it's mostly indie films. There's one horror film that uh, that, that that I watched with him in recently. For, in my Great Britain, I'm trying to remember what it was called. Can't be the tire movie, is it? No, it's him and his fiance go into a, um, a, a. It used to be a public park, like a national park, but it's been bought by private and private concerns to develop uh, like high high end housing, and they go there before going getting married, going on their honeymoon for. Um, just to camp out for a couple of days, and they encounter some bastard local kids, and it's it's hellish. But I can't remember what the name of the movie is. Anyway, anyways, um, the, um, the, the all the actors played in here were superb. But I have to hand grand acclaim to the return of Kevin Bacon to the silver screen because his acting chops have not been tarnished by his music skills. <laughs> As you all know, he went away for a while with his his band, uh, the Bacon Brothers, and uh, him and his brother and the other bandmates were touring quite vividly. In fact, he's still doing it even with uh, shooting movies, but wow. Um, I mean, the last movie I remember seeing him in was uh, with the Queen Latifah as a hairdresser that... Uh, Decided to try and get revenge. Fabio, I think, was his name. And he was in the movies, but it's uh, been a while. It's been a while. It's been quite a long while, but it was fun seeing him back. The movie itself is set in um, in the 1960s. In the 1960s, where unfortunately the Cuban Missile Crisis, it all intersects at that crucial point where humanity takes a turn for the worse, and uh, mutant kind is born, um, so to speak. Anyways, you get to see some of the Hellfire Club. Uh, unfortunately, you do not get to see more than three members, which two of the members I don't think even existed in the original Hellfire Club from when I was collecting comic books in, in the 1980s. Or, uh, the, uh, the as Azel. Guy. And then the other one, I think they called him the Red Tornado, but he, I don't remember being... They didn't give him a name, but he he could transform himself into a tornado. So Azazel never existed in the comic books at all? Azazel, I don't remember him existing, but then again, he could have. Because honestly, because uh, when you look at Azazel and you, and you look at Mystique, uh, I can only think of one word, Nightcrawler. Yeah. But that said, folks, uh, it is to be noted that of the executive producers, three were brought in for the movie. Stan Lee was brought in, and he did not make an appearance in this movie. Unless he had a cameo, we didn't notice, but normally they, they don't hide it. No, not with, not with Stan the Man. No. Besides, he would have been listed in the credits as Stan the Man. Yeah, you're right. And he wasn't. Yeah. Uh, that's always how he likes to roll. Oh, look, oh, oh, look it's Stan Lee. Look at the tornado. Oh, he's gone. Excelsior. <laughs> um, so, as for the movie being seen in theaters, yes. 
Um, I have to say that although there was not a lot of action, there was nothing really boring. Uh, the storyline was well written, the script was very well written. And the actors were good. It's not, it's not like there were any actors in the film that fell flat. Oh yes, uh, flat. there is something that we have to say. The uh, White Queen uh, is played by uh, all, uh, one of is the actresses. Is it the White Queen or the Frost Queen? Uh, White Queen, Emma Frost. Okay. And she's known as Emma Frost in the movie anyways. Uh, her real actress name I don't remember, but she's one of the one of the big names starring in I know, Mad Men. I know her from Mad Men because she plays Donald Draper's ex-wife, but uh, I don't I, I, I can never recall what her name mm. is. But the movie is very well worth it. Besides, you get to see Michael Ironside again playing a military role. <laughs> he does a cameo for a small bit part in his old military stylings. Uh, Oliver Platt is also in it, uh, with an incredible death, one I would never see Oliver Platt actually participating. In fact, I thought Oliver Platt was a member of the Hellfire Club, but unfortunately he didn't. And Hugh Jackman it. does have a very, very brief but priceless cameo. Yes, and we won't spoil that one because there's no credits at the end of the movie, nothing to stay for apart from just reading the credits. A uh, big shout out and warmth of appreciation goes out to the state of Georgia and the US who gave three quarters of all the shooting to themselves in some my, my one location in the uh, UK, I think. I have no idea. Yeah. Unless the post, I, well, I, I can imagine there was a location in the UK, it might have been the actual Xavier Manor. Yeah, could be. But either way, the movie was well done. And we both appreciate it. I wouldn't see it twice in movies because X-Men movies for me, regardless of what they are, even Wolverine, seeing it twice in movies, it's better to see it once and then buy it as a collector's item or yeah, add on to a DVD with or Blu-ray Blu Blu collection. At least you have all the extras to go through. In the movie, you've already seen everything. Yep. It's not a movie like, it's not something like uh, Inception, where you watch it three times and every time you, see, you notice something different. Yeah, but that's because there's a lot of things going on. Yeah, exactly. On. So, two thumbs up for me. Yipper. And two thumbs up for Mitch. So Two thumbs up and a crooked finger. Uh... With that, folks, we hope that you'll have a very nice week. This coming week. From me and Mitch. I feel toasty in this car. It's nice. Have a nice one. <laughs>